Dear learner, I welcome you all to the massive open online course on industrial safety and fire safety management. I am Sanjay Agarwal, professor and pro vice chancellor of Chhattisgarh Swami Vivekanand Technical University. Dear learner, in the previous lecture we have discussed case study that is Bombay dock ship explosion and under this module we discussed time limit odd incident post explosion result of explosion then plan of dogs losses lesson learned and legacy and the comparative analysis dear learner in this particular session we are going to discuss on the topic that is called electrical hazard and safety and under this module we will explain importance of the electrical safety and after that we will also discuss electrical hazard and its prevention then what are the different electrical safety standards and we will also discuss personal protective equipment for the electrical safety and lastly we will discuss some emergency responses are required to overcome this electrical hazard and safety so first of all we are going to discuss about the importance of the electrical safety the importance of electrical safety cannot be overstated electricity is a fundamental part of the modern life powering our homes workplace and industries however it also carries inherent risk that if not managed properly can lead to a serious consequence every year electrical accident result in injuries and extensive property damage these incidents are often preventable through awareness education and adherence to the safety protocols ensuring electrical safety is not just a legal or regulatory requirement it is a moral and ethical responsibility it means safeguarding lives preserving properties and promoting a culture of well being in our communities there are two kind of electricity one is a static that is also called stationary and second one is a dynamic this module is about the dynamic electricity which is the most common electricity we come across electricity is defined by the flow of electron through a conductor or you can say electricity or you can say current basically i that is proportional to dq over dt or you can say it is a rate of change of the charges on the job site working around electricity can be very safe when worker properly recognize and manage hazard but in adequate training lack of understanding and failure to identify potential hazard could result in electrical shock or death the construction industry poses maximum challenge like those from electrical hazard and most of these incident and fatalities are caused by direct worker contact with the overhead power lines and contact with the machines tools and hand carried metallic object so now we have to understand what is this electrical hazard so electrical hazard are the situation or the conditions that pose a risk of injury damage or harm due to the presence or use of electricity these hazard can occur in various settings including homes workplace and industrial environment where electrical system and equipment are present engineers electrician and overhead line worker are at the top list of the professional who are most exposed to electrical hazard electricity has long been recognized as a serious workplace hazard occupational safety and health administration electrical standard are designed to protect employee exposed to danger such as electrical shock electrocution fires and explosions electrocution is one of the most common hazard across construction site and by identifying electrical hazard we can help in raising awareness of the risk their severity and how it can harm workers here are some of the most common electrical hazard that took place in the workplace and tips on why which this risk can be mitigated first one is overhead power lines so overhead power and energized electrical lines have 
high voltage which can cause major burns and electrocution to the worker remember to maintain a minimum distance of 10 feet from the overhead power line and nearby equipment conduct site survey to ensure that nothing is stored under the overhead power lines also safety barriers and the signs must be installed to warn nearby non electrical worker of the hazard present in that area now we will discuss damage tools and equipment exposure to damage electrical tools and equipment can be very dangerous so do not fix anything unless you are qualified to do so thoroughly check for the cracks cut on cables wire and the cord now if we talk about inadequate wiring and overloaded circuit so what you can do using wire with the inappropriate size for the current can cause overheating and fires to occur use the correct wire suitable for the operation and the electrical load to work on use the correct extension cord designed for the heavy duty use also do not overload an outlet and use proper circuit breaker perform regular fire risk assessment to identify areas at risk of the wet wiring and the circuits now if we talk about the exposed electrical parts these hazard can cause potential shock and burn secure these item with proper guarding mechanism and always check for any exposed part that need immediate repair if we talk about the improper grounding so the most common osha electrical violation is improper grounding of the equipment proper grounding can eliminate unwanted voltage and reduce the risk of electrocution so never remove the metallic ground pin as it is responsible for returning unwanted voltage to the ground now here we will discuss the type of the electrical hazard so this electrical hazard can be classified as electrical shock electrical burns arc flashes and electrical fires and explosion so if we talk about the electrical shock so electrical shock is a dangerous and potentially life threatening event that can occurs when electrical current passes through the human body it can happen when a person comes into direct contact with the live electrical conductor faulty equipment or improperly grounded electrical systems now we have to understand what are the effect of the electrical shock on the human body so when a person experience electrical shock several immediate and long term effect can occur and these effects are like muscles contraction so the electrical current can cause involuntary muscles contraction which can lead to the person being unable to release their grip on the electrical source another if effect of the electrical shock on the human body is pain and burns so electrical shock can cause severe pain at the point of the contact with the electrical source additionally electrical current passing through the body can generate a heat potentially resulting in burns both at entry and exit point third effect is cardiac arrest so high voltage shock can disturb the normal activity of the heart leading to cardiac arrest and this is a critical and life threatening condition that require immediate medical attention another effect of the electrical shock or you can say electrical hazard is respiratory distress in some cases electrical shock can affect the muscles used for the breathing potentially leading to respiratory distress another effect is neurological and psychological effect electrical shock can also have long term neurological and psychological effect including memory problems anxiety and po post traumatic stress disorder now here we will discuss the factor influencing the severity of the electrical shock so the severity of the electrical shock can vary significantly and depends on several factor like voltage so if you talk about the 
the factor which influences the electrical shock that is a voltage so higher voltage level typically result in more severe shock low voltage shock may painful but are less likely to cause significant injury so the higher the current and voltage associated with alternating current or direct current the greater the electrical damage will be high voltage current that is if voltage is between 500 volt to 1000 voltage typically will result in deep burns while the low voltage that is around 110 volt to 120 volt 20 volt more likely to result in tetany now if we talk about the current so the amount of current passing through the body plays a crucial role higher current are more likely to cause serious harm so here you can see if we are talking about the current and what are the reaction so you here you can see if there is a current is roughly 1 milliampere so it will be the perception level only if if current that is going through the human body is around the 5 milliampere then effect will be slight shock uh, felt or not painful but it will be the disturbing if it is 6 to 30 milliampere so there will be the painful shock so here you can see the effect of the current if it is 50 to 150 milliampere so extensive pain you will be you will feel if current is more than suppose 1000 to 4000 300 milliampere or you can say 1 ampere to 4.3 ampere so there will be a serious effect and it may be the cause of the death also now we will discuss the effect of current that means duration of the exposure of the current so the longer a person is in contact with the electrical source the greater the potentially for the injury it will de also depends on the path of the current the path of the electrical current takes through the body can affect the severity of the injuries current passing through the vital organs such as heart is especially very dangerous now resistance of the body because your body resistance is also depends that means if your body has a capability to resist that current so what will be the effect it will depend on the resistance of the body also so the body resistance to the electrical current varies from person to person and can be influenced by the factor such as moisture on the skin and the presence of the insulating material like uh, rubber a uh, rubber uh, sole shoes the another effect that is a health and physical condition a person's overall health pre existing medical condition and physical condition can impact how their body responds to the electrical shock now here we will discuss electrical safety practice to prevent the electrical shock so first uh, safety practice it may be the lock out tag out in short it is called loto l o t o so basically safe work practice are the essential to prevent electrical accident among these practice lock out tag out is a critical procedure to control hazardous energy and ensure the safety of the worker so loto is a systematic procedure used to deenergize and isolate electrical equipment and machinery during maintenance repair or serving it involves placing locks and tags on the energy isolation device to prevent accident energization verifying that all energy sources are the safely locked out before work begins training employees in the loto procedure and ensuring they understand its importance loto is a crucial because it prevents unexpected equipment startup which can lead to electrical shock burns and the other accident compliance with the loto procedure is a mandated by the various safety regulations now we will discuss about the earthing and grounding so first we will discuss the earthing earthing refers to the process of the connecting the metallic parts of the electrical device or the system to the earth's conductive surface usually through a metal rod buried in the ground 
the primary purpose of earthing in electrical system is to provide a low resistance path for the fault current such as electrical leakage or short circuit to safely dissipate into the ground this helps several electrical shock and fires by the maintaining the electrical potential of the exposed metal parts close to close to zero in telecommunication earthing involves connecting metallic component that is antenna tower to the earth to reduce the electrical interference and enhance signal quality now we talk about the grounding grounding of electrical system is the practice of connecting electrical equipment device and circuit to the earth or a reference point usually through a conducting pathway like a copper rod buried in the ground to ensure safety protect against the electrical fault and stabilize voltage level this grounding provides a safe path for the electrical fault such as short circuit and lightning strikes to dissipate harmlessly into the ground reducing the risk of the electrical shock and the fire so we can say that earthing and grounding both involve connecting object or the system to the earth or a common reference point to ensure safety and functionality however earthing is commonly used in electrical and telecommunication context while grounding is a more general term that can encompass various application beyond just electrical systems now we will discuss the electrical maintenance and inspection so routine maintenance of electrical system and equipment such as checking for the loose connection damaged wire and worn out component helps identify and address potential hazard before they before become critical issues inspection checklist and the protocol should be introduced to ensure that all electrical equipment in a good working condition use of thermal imaging and the other diagnostic tools helps for early problem detection of the faulty condition need of maintenance record of the equipment maintenance and inspections serves as a proof of compliance and assist in tracking equipment history now we will discuss about the training and education so training and education are the fundamental to electrical safety it includes all employee especially those who work with or around electrical system should receive training or electrical safety practice procedure and hazard recognition ensure that only qualified personnel are allowed to perform electrical work qualification often involve specific training certification and experience training to employ in emergency response procedure including first aid for the electrical injuries and evacuation plans so what are these electrical burns electrical burns are the injuries that result from the passage of the electrical current through the body tissues this burn occur when the electrical current generates heat within the body causing damage to the skin and underlying tissues it is essential to understand that electrical burns can be more complex than typical thermal burn due to the nature of the injury so this burn can again be classified as a thermal burn so thermal burn are similar to the burn caused by the other heat sources that is fire or the hot object and occur when the skin and the underlying tissues are exposed to high temperature in electrical incident thermal burns can result from the contact with the hot electrical equipment or the conductor that have become overheated due to the electrical fault if we talk about the arc burn so arc burn are unique to electrical incident involving high voltage or high current electrical fault during an electrical fault an arc flash or arc blast can occur releasing intense heat and light arc burn arc burn result from exposure to the extreme temperature 
of the arc flash and can be highly destructive. Now, how this electrical burn can be prevented? So now we will discuss the topic that is prevention of the electrical burn. The best way to deal with the electrical burn is to prevent them from happening in the first place. Some of the key prevention of this strategy include like uh, training and education, personal protective equipment. So if we talk about the training and education, ensure that individual working with or around electrical electricity receives proper training on electrical safety protocol. If we talk about the personal protective equipment, so use appropriate personal protective equipment such as insulating gloves and protective clothing when working with the electrical system. Then lockout and tagout as we have already discussed. Implement lockout tagout procedure to de-energize electrical equipment during maintenance on repair work. Proper equipment maintenance is required. So regularly inspect and maintain the electrical equipment to identify and address potential hazards. If we talk about the arc flashes, so arc flashes are sudden and violent release of electrical energy often accompanied by intense heat and light. These events occur when there is a fault or short circuit in an electrical system. Arc flashes are extremely hazardous and can result in severe injuries, burn and even fatalities. Now here we will discuss the cause of the arc flash. Equipment failure, human error. So if we talking about we talk about the electrical failure, so faulty or aging electrical equipment can lead to arc flash incident, damaged wiring, loose connection or worn out component increase the risk. If we talk about the human error, so improper maintenance such as failing to follow lockout tagout procedure or misaligning electrical contact can cause arc flashes. Another factor is environmental factor. So dust, debris or contaminants inside electrical enclosure can create conditions conductive to the arc flash. Similarly, moisture or humidity can lead to the electrical fault. Another factor is overcurrent or short circuit. So electrical system can experience overcurrent condition or short circuit due to the power surges, equipment malfunctions or other electrical disturbances which may initiate arc flashes. Now here we will discuss how these arc flashes can be prevented. So under the topic of the prevention from the arc flash, here are the some key component. We will discuss one by one. First one is arc flash boundary. So this is the minimum safe distance from the source of the arc flash within which a person could be exposed to a second degree burn if an arc flash were to occur. The boundary distance is determined by the available fault energy and is measured in feet or meters. Second point is limited approach boundary. Within the boundary, it is still possible to expose to a shock hazard. So appropriate personal protective equipment should be worn by the qualified worker in the limited space. Not qualified workers should stay outside of this boundary unless wearing proper personal protective equipment and being escorted by a worker with specialized training. Third point is restricted boundary. So the area closest to the live exposed equipment is within the restricted boundary. In order to pass this boundary, you must be qualified worker with the proper training and personal protective equipment. If you need to perform work on the energized equipment, you may also need a work permit and documentation. Now here we will discuss use of personal protective equipment in electrical work. So the purpose of the personal protective equipment is to protect the person undertaking the task. The biggest risk 
to an electrician is coming into contact with the electricity but steps should be in place such as isolation to prevent this happening so personal protective equipment would be a second line of defense for the individual so basic personal protective equipment are cotton protective clothing with the long sleeves another pp are the helmet or you can say hard hat third one is a goggles for the eye protection next one is a gloves which may be made of the leather or the rubber then hearing protectors and next is a safety footwear so if we talk about the helmet as a personal protective equipment so helmet normally need to be worn only when working on the outdoor switch gear where they serve to protect against the falling object and collision with the solid object at the at head height outdoor substations should always be considered safety helmet areas and the helmet we are made compulsory if we talk about the eye protection so eye protection should be worn when working with the hazardous fluid particularly mineral oil to prevent splashes into the eyes they should always be worn when washing down the internal parts of the circuit breaker if we talk about the rubber insulating gloves so rubber insulating gloves are among the most important articles of the personal protection for the electrical workers to be effective electrical safety gloves must incorporate dielectric properties and physical strength along with the flexibility and durability leather protector gloves are used to help provide mechanical protection needed against cut and punctures if we talk about the hearing protectors so hearing protectors are only required when the worker is in noisy situation that can occur during construction work if we talk about the safety footwear as a uh, ppe or you can say personal protective equipment so safety footwear should be routinely worn in all working areas and the shoes or the boots should incorporate steel toe cap and non slip sole now here we will discuss the requirement of a specific protective equipment for the specific work safety harness should be worn when working at any height greater than 1.5 meter above the ground level and a full harness equipment with a connector is preferred fall arrest equipment may be necessary when working at high level harness should be chosen that are suitable for the their intended application and should be of design that will support the user in the correct position harness should be comfortable allowing adequate movement of the user and unhindered operation of other device within the system depending on the condition of the work at sit harness may be necessary sit harness has lateral and the central attachment point and are designed primarily to used for the work in suspension although they may be used for work resistance purpose respirators can also be necessary when the leakage of sf6 is suspected although sf6 sulfur hexafluoride is not toxic it degrades under the heat of arcing to the gases when performing energized work or switching operation insulated gloves and dielectric shoes are required the gloves must be tested and suitable for the working voltage now we will discuss personal protective equipment for the arc flash when a risk of arc flash exists the selection of ppe and its characteristic can be done as a consequence of the calculation of the incident arc energy or consulting a hazard category classification table one of those table can be found at national fire protection association standard that is 70e so protective equipment for arc flash consist of flame resistant protective clothing arc flash protection hood hard hat safety glasses and gloves now we will discuss tips to avoid electrical accident so electrical wiring is everywhere tucked behind the walls of 
your homes and within your hd television dvd player laptop computer printer smartphone security system and other equipment it only takes one electrical accident to deliver a lethal jolt to a human body or burn a home to the ground so copper development association offers a few tips to keep to keep you properly safe which are as follows first one is reduce excessive loft temperature so when you are up in a loft or a sunny summer day you would know the meaning of the hot if the wire are buried in the loft insulation pass over the light fixture or worst all are arranged in the tight bundles they become even hotter than if they are out in the open the heat does not affect the copper conductor in the wiring it is the plastic insulation and jacketing the surround the wire that are problem these are usually rated to withstand up to 194 degree of temperature the cumulative effect of ambient heat and current on the attic wiring can result in temperature that come close to or exceed the limit to help reduce excessive temperature that could possibly lead to fire use larger diameter wire then minimum requirement because they offer less resistance to the electrical current and they permit more current flow while staying cooler second tip to avoid electrical hazard is replace old wiring along with the spring cleaning it is a great time to update electrical wiring if home is more than 25 year old then upgrade the electrical service as it might have an inadequate and possible hazardous wiring system homes more than 40 year old are especially susceptible to wear the frayed wires crumbling insulation or faulty switches so passing too much current through a wire or overloading can melt or burn the wire insulation and start a fire if your home is wired with the aluminum branch circuit wiring largely used 50 or more year ago consider replacing the wiring with the modern copper branch circuit third tips to avoid electrical accident is avoid overloaded or damaged extension cord so electrical tools and appliances have different power rating these rugged weather resistant portable cord are designed to accommodate a variety of temporary power requirement but not all extension cord are created equal wearing in gauge and thus capacity an unnecessary sized extension cord can cause a tool or appliances motor to burn out if allowed to run for too long it can also cause a dangerous situation if it overheats so it is important to know how much electrical current typically rated in ampere each electrical tools require high power tools and appliances like saw mowers heaters and conditioner use considerably more amperes so extension cord rated to the handle greater electrical load should be used with them amperes rating are also marked on the equipment itself other tips to let avoid electrical accident is install a lighting protection system grounding is also a one tips to avoid electrical accident next tip to avoid electrical accident is circuit protection device a special training to employees also a one tip to avoid electrical accident dear learner in this module we have covered essential aspect of the electrical safety from understanding electrical hazard to implementing preventing measure it is a crucial to reiterate the paramount importance of the electrical safety electricity is an integral part of our lives but it also poses inherent risk ignoring that risk can lead to devastating consequences including injuries fatalities property damage and legal liabilities electrical safety is not just a set of rules and procedure it is a responsibility that we all share whether at home in workplace or on construction site remember that electrical accident 
are preventable through education training awareness and commitment to the following safety protocol and standard we can ensure that electricity remains a valuable and safe resources so let us commit to making electrical safety as a top priority both in our professional and personal lives by doing so we can ensure a safer more secure future for ourselves and those around us dear learner in this particular module we discussed importance of the electrical safety electrical hazard and its prevention electrical safety standards then we discussed personal protective equipment for the electrical safety learner in the next lecture we will discuss on the topic radiation hazard and safety and under this topic we will discuss sources of the radiation radiation exposure biological effect of the radiation and radiation protection rule 1971 thank you for your attention and stay safe thank you very much